Hey guys, so today we're going to do something a little different. I'm here in my lab slash shop slash garage and I'm going to take a few minutes and talk to you about something that's very near and dear to my heart and that is potential relays. When I was first coming up in the industry, these, uh, these potential relays were very, very confusing to me and it took years and years for me to really grasp how they work and they're really simple once you understand it, but it, it just took an old guy to kind of break it down in layman's terms. Um, so that's what I'm going to kind of do is I'm just going to reiterate how it was taught to me and uh, see if, you know, maybe it'll click for somebody out there. Um, I'm about to show you a wiring diagram and it's out of a machine that I see these used in a lot. You might not see this particular wiring diagram in one of the machines you've seen or will see in the future. So just keep that in mind. These are used in multitudes of different machines with different wiring schematics. Um, but they operate exactly the same in every single machine. So that's what we're going to look at here, all right? Now right here is our potential relay in its, its natural habitat, if you will. Right here we have our run cap, our start cap. Quick tip, it's a run cap because it's got a metal housing. It's in the circuit longer. Start caps are not in the circuit as long and don't really require a metal housing because there's not much heat to dissipate, whereas these need to dissipate heat all the time. So this is our potential relay. Um, just imagine these wires go to an invisible compressor. Red is our run. White will be our start, which is blue on our schematic because I obviously can't put white on a whiteboard. And then black will be our common. This wire would go to our thermal protector right here, the symbol that you see right there. Now, these, as you can tell from the wiring schematic, they are in a closed position naturally. When it's off, it's in a closed position. Now, if you're not familiar with how a compressor really starts, what you need to do is you need to have the start capacitor initially help the compressor turn over, especially in this particular machine that this came out of, there's no pump down solenoid. Um, so it's starting from an equalized, almost a loaded position, I guess. Um, so I need that start capacitor to give an extra phase shift in order to get that compressor to turn over. Now, after we get that compressor to turn over, we need to get that start capacitor out of the circuit. And if you look at our start capacitor right here in our potential relay, in order to do that, we need to have the terminals right here between one and two, we need to open those up. Now, if you notice right here, forgive me, I'm not an artist, um, but I drew it the best I could. So this squiggly line right here is actually the coil to this potential relay. And what happens is we get a call for cool, condensing unit kicks on, this is, nap this is closed to begin with, so our start capacitor kicks in, helps turn our compressor over. We start running. Once the compressor is about three quarters of the way going, not 100% not full speed, but about three quarters of the way to full speed, the start winding actually acts as a generator and produces what's called back EMF, back electromotive force. And that back EMF will come right through here through our blue wire or excuse me, it's not actually blue, this is going to be our white wire, but um, just for showing you purposes, just for uh, this presentation, I drew it with blue. So our back EMF will come through, through our number two, through our relay, back out through five, which is back out to our common, and that back EMF will actually power this relay, and that will actually open up these two terminals, cutting off power from our start capacitor, essentially taking it out of the circuit. Now, the key part for me was thinking of this start winding as a generator. Once it's going, yes, you do need to apply power to that electric motor in order to get it to turn over, but once it is turning over, that electric motor also acts as a generator, and it generates that back EMF that opens this up. So once that's opened up, it'll stay opened up, as long as the compressor is running. So let's say it's been 20 minutes, our compressor or our unit hits temperature and our compressor shuts off. 
now we have no more power at this uh, condensing unit so this relay will go back down back into its natural state into its normally closed state and it'll be ready for the next time we start up now it's fairly simple um, a lot of this wiring on here it's it's not very complicated of course we have the, our uh, our run capacitor start capacitor this is our condensing fan motor um, and that's obviously just on whenever we have whenever we have a call for cooling at our condenser assuming it works that will be on um, now here let's see if I can get the camera to focus in right here is a actual potential relay and this is the actual relay that you see right back here it's just the second one that I had taken apart um, now that number five as long as I can get our focus right here now this is our relay that I was talking about or excuse me our solenoid inside the relay so when that back EMF is produced in our start winding because again you got to think of the start winding as a sort of generator that back EMF will come through terminals 2 and 5 through these two wires right here and it will power this solenoid and this solenoid is an electromagnetic solenoid once it's powered it sucks this little armature down now if you can see right here once that armature is pulled down there is no longer connection from this wire to this wire which is between our 1 and 2 the 1 and 2 pretty simple Compressor, com compressor comes on this is again this is in the normally closed position so our compressor comes on starts producing back EMF on our start winding this is energized our armature pulls down essentially cutting up op or opening up one and two circuits which are for our start capacitor and then our start capacitor is out of the circuit it's just that simple um, now as far as troubleshooting these when they fail I haven't had too many of them fail usually it's the you know something other than than these will fail like a compressor which I guess there's probably been a few compressors that have failed because of this and maybe I missed it but um, I have found a few of these uh, they'll fail in the closed position uh, or this relay excuse me not the relay the solenoid inside this relay will will just burn out and it won't actually open up the circuit letting the uh, releasing the start capacitor from the circuit um, and what will happen is your, your start capacitor will stay in the circuit, your compressor will probably go off on thermal overload or, overload or worse, um, might actually burn up uh, start winding or whatnot. Uh, and the best way to do that is, or best way to test for that is if you can take this relay off, unwire it, take it off, and then what you do is you just check between uh, one, or excuse me, two and five, and you should have some sort of resistance and that will vary depending on your actual potential relay because they're manufactured by many different companies so uh, but you should have some sort of resistance through this solenoid so if you suspect that it's bad you suspect that the start winding or the excuse me that the start capacitor and the start winding are not getting taken out of the circuit you can test across that and you can see if that uh, solenoid is any good now also you can you can check because sometimes they could fail open it might your compressor might start or it might struggle to start but eventually start um, it might make a lot of noise might be uh, pulling a lot of amps maybe cycling off on your thermal protector you can check across two and one if it's unplugged and it's in the off position this will be assuming it's working properly this will be normally closed so you can check across one and two and you should have continuity through there now I learned this the hard way when I tested one of these before I left all the wiring hooked up and I was getting all sorts of false readings because I was actually reading through my various components instead of actually taking everything off and then testing the relay itself so you do have to unwire everything to make sure you're getting a proper test but get all your wiring off there and test between two and one and if it's working properly that will be closed and then take a reading between two and five and you should have resistance on your solenoid all right guys so that wraps up our our little uh, speech about potential relays one of the things I did want to reiterate 
that I don't think I touched on then in the video is that sometimes that back EMF voltage coming off of the start winding can be upwards of 400 volts. So be very careful if you are testing it, if you feel like you just want to go in there and poke around with your meter leads, be very careful because you could be touching some pretty high voltage. Even though you're only working on a 120, 208, 240, whatever unit, that back, back EMF coming off of that start winding might be much, much higher. So be careful with that. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little bit. Hope, uh, hope somebody out there kind of clicked in their brains uh, about how potential relays work. But uh, if you have any comments or anything, leave them below. Like and subscribe. Shoot me an email if you want. All right? We'll see you guys in the next one.